Hola, welcome to another Notes in Spanish video. Uh, I'm Ben and I'm here with Marina. Hola Ben, ¿qué tal? Muy bien. ¿Tú cómo estás? Muy bien. Me alegro. Uh, today we've got the November Q&A, the questions from our patrons, those people who are very kindly supporting us on patreon.com. Thank you very much for your support. Um, a few of the questions we've actually separated into separate videos because we thought it made more sense. So those will be coming around the same time as this one. So keep an eye out for them. Uh, we'll link to them when they're ready from underneath uh, this video on YouTube and on our blog. Also, there's lots of language in today's video. So we're going to list that underneath the video, either in YouTube or on the blog as well. Um, Marina, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. What's the first question? Okay, Randy says, uh... ¿Cómo decir what's the point en español? Por ejemplo, what's the point in doing that? Well, we thought of an example, you know, because usually we're thinking that he means in kind of an ironic sense, you know, what's the point in that? Mm. Um, so a typical thing might be if you've got a really mean boss and, and you ask for a raise. So how would that go with the conversation, uh, Marina? Voy a pedir una subida a mi jefe. Una subida, a raise, mm -hmm. okay. And your workmate, who says, well, that's not very likely, <laughs> what, would, what would they say? ¿Para qué? Yeah. Total, ¿para qué te va a servir? Okay, so let's break that down. First of all, very simple. What's the point? ¿Para qué? You know, it's a bit like, why? Um, but then the next thing that Marina said is, is super Spanish, super real, straight from the <laughs> Spanish workplace. Can you repeat it again? Total, ¿para qué te va a servir? Total is a way, just a classic Spanish way of saying, pfft. Why, you know, y, what was it? Para lo que te va a servir, for all the use it's going to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so some extra good Spanish there for saying, what's the point? So if the, if the question doesn't have uh, the ironic point, then it could be, uh, ¿cuál es la razón? What's the point? Yeah. But I think uh, Randy meant the ironic way. Yeah, para qué? What's the point? <laughs> okay, we've got a great question, another great question. They're all great questions now from David. Marina, do you want to, to read the question? My question is part language, part, part cultural. How, as a vegetarian, should I deal with being given meat-based tapas without appearing rude and ungrateful? I was recently in Granada and felt uncomfortable sending the tapas back. So David's in Granada. In Granada, when you order a drink, you always get given a free tapa, mm -hmm. and he got something with meat in it. Very normal uh, in Granada or anywhere in Spain, but he felt uncomfortable sending it back. Uh, what could he have said, Marina? Eh, muchas gracias. ¿Te importaría cambiarme la tapa por una que no tenga carne? Soy vegetariano. And that's it. No problem. Culturally, no problem. <laughs> For British people like me, sending stuff back in restaurants is like, oh no, they're going to do something terrible to my food. In Spain, everybody sends their food back. Uh, there's no problem. You know, if your meat's undercooked, sorry, there's not very good to bring meat into a vegetarian <laughs> discussion but it's very common that for example people who have an undercooked steak will send it back and they'll send it back a second time if they need to um, in terms of therefore protesting in any way politely about your food in Spain no problem just just ask politely that that would be my main find the the most polite way to send it back and then everything is okay yeah now yeah carry on yeah Culturally, there is a few things about vegetarianism in Spain. And uh, one of them is that sometimes they would understand that you don't eat meat, but they would bring something with tuna in it. Yeah. So one has to be... Or ham. Or because ham. Because they say, it's not meat, it's ham. It's, it's ah. embutido. It's, uh... No es carne, es jamón. <laughs> I've heard that a lot. And you go, no, 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 <laughs> hang on. <laughs> So how would you check then, when you're looking at the menu, and yeah. before the food even comes, just to clear up any doubts with the waiter, what could you say to the waiter, Marina, um, so that you're not even, even going to get to that stage? Perdona, ¿este plato eh, tiene carne, pescado o embutido? Es que soy vegetariano. Es que soy vegetariano. Mm -hmm. If you say that when you're talking to the waiter before the meal even comes, uh, no problem at all. You can check each menu Better item. to check. Beforehand. In Spain, better to check. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we know we've been through periods of vegetarianism in the past. Um, we're more flexitarian now, which people actually say in Spain, soy flexitariano, <laughs> no? 
a little bit. Um, and you have to check. Yeah. Okay, Marcus. Marina, do you want to read Marcus's yes. question? I have a question regarding the word navideño. I saw this word on a poster several years ago, but I rarely see this word used when I read Christmas-related articles in Spanish. I know that people say árbol de Navidad Christmas for Christmas tree, tree yeah. canciones de Navidad for Christmas song, songs, época de Navidad for Christmas time, regalos de Navidad for Christmas presents or gifts. Uh, so when would you actu actually use navideño? Could I instead say árbol navideño, canciones navideñas, época navideña? Okay, well, can he? So, but first of all, thank you for the great list of Spanish Christmas vocab. And by the way, we're going to make another video on Christmas holiday greetings uh, to follow this one. Um, but let's run through them. Can you say árbol navideño? You don't use árbol de Navidad. You, I don't think it's incorrect, but you, you don't hear that. Not common. Not common. Okay, fuera. As yeah. they say. Canciones uh, navideñas, you can say, no problem. Totally. Y época navideña, it's correct, no problem either. Se nos acerca la época navideña. Se acerca la época Se navideña. Se acerca, vale, la época navideña. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, uh, he carries on, Marcus Mina. Would it be correct to say, me encanta la época de Navidad? El amor está en, la aire, en el aire y todas las casas de mi ciudad están adornadas con cosas navideñas. Perfect. You could say adornos navideños o cosas navideñas. No problem. By the way, what a poetic sentence. In English it would be, I love Christmas time, love is in the air, and all of the houses in my city are uh, decorated with Christmas things. You want to read it again in Spanish? For... Me encanta la época de Navidad. El amor está en el aire y todas las casas de mi ciudad están adornadas con cosas navideñas. Fantastic. By the way, we have a podcast coming up for Christmas for our Notes in Spanish Conversations podcast called... Siete curiosidades navideñas. Navideñas, there you go. Uh, keep an eye out for that. Lots of very funny things about Spanish Christmas. Um, the tablecloth is very Christmassy. El mantel, este mantel es muy navideño. Okay. Um, there's a really Christmassy atmosphere in the Plaza Mayor. Hay un ambiente muy navideño en la Plaza Mayor. Okay, so yeah, there we go. Navideño. Marcus. And navideño you use uh, after the noun, because you were asking as well that you read somewhere that this adjective uh, must apparently come before the noun. But um, we haven't found any examples no, of that. It it's goes after. After. It's uh, un ambiente navideño, un... Mantel navideño, it comes after mm. the noun. Page two. You can tell we're looking at our notes down here. <laughs> no on. page two there. No page two. Page two. <laughs> okay, page two. <laughs> now, Marcus sneaked in a second question, and that's okay. This this month, we'll let you off. Um, he says, I've asked a question already, but hopefully I can ask a second one. Last month, I came across an interesting expression, a flor de piel. If I remember senten the sentence correctly, it went like this. Uh, un, un día vas a despertar con la nostalgia flor de piel. One day you're going to wake up with your nostalgia bursting through, uh, just under the skin. Yeah. Okay. A a about to come up. About to appear in your to life. Appear, yeah. Yeah. Um, so Marcus carries on. Yeah. I, I assume it means something intense, for example, waking up with intense nostalgia. Is that right? Are there any other examples you could give me? Well, it doesn't mean it's intense. It means it's just lurking under your skin. So one day you're going to wake up with the nostalgia just about to burst into your life. Um, we've got another example which we hope will, will clear this up. Marina. Tengo los nervios a flor de piel. Perdón. Tiene los nervios a flor de piel. <laughs> Mejor que le dejes tranquila. <laughs> okay. Uh, so let's break that down. Tiene los nervios a flor de piel. Um, She's on the edge of her nerves. The, be careful. <laughs> the second part is mejor que le dejes tranquila. Better leave her in peace, yeah. okay? Because it's going to break out any minute. <laughs> so, it's very much used with emotions. Yeah. Tiene las emociones a flor de piel. Yeah, her emotions are right there under the surface or anger or a smile, you know, all sorts of things could be a flor de piel. They're always just under the surface. Uh, often better they stay there. Okay. Okay, Jill, Jill from New Zealand 
says, in the episode about the scooters in Madrid, Marina said to Ben, hombre, tampoco te pases. <laughs> okay, let's put this in context. Uh, I had just been saying that I used to, that everyone should walk around Madrid and that I used to walk from one side of Madrid to the other. Half, or half, half of Across Madrid. half the city when half I walked to city. work every day. And Marina said... Hombre, no te pases. Because okay. it was a total exaggeration. He just uh, walked maybe 20 minutes, not half of the city. Oh, man, I walk very fast. <laughs> <laughs> so let's look at Marina's sentence. Hombre, no te pases. So yeah. this hombre, if you use hombre in your Spanish speech, then you are you might as well get your Spanish passport. <laughs> you, you are certified 100% very good real Spanish. I hardly ever use it because it sounds I just feel like a fraud because I think you have to have Spanish DNA to say hombre really perfectly but you go for it even if I don't okay hombre is like a filler and it can be used with different uh, kind of phrases it can be used in this case to to express disagreement or or as it's an exaggeration but it can be used in positive situations as well and it doesn't mean that you are talking to a man. No. It's, it doesn't have anything it's, to do... Like you said, it's a filler word. Yeah. Uh, it's got nothing to do with your... You know, Marina says it to, to uh, her sister. Hombre. Uh, no te pases. No te pases, yeah. yeah. Um, but it can also mean, for example, well. You know, for example, if I say, why don't you get this train to San, San Sebastian? No? Uh, Hombre, mm, no lo había pensado. Claro. So, again, the whole sentence would be... Uh, no sería más fácil para ti ir a San Sebastián en tren? And you say... Hombre, no lo había pensado. It's like giving you time to think. Yeah. Wow. Well, I haven't really thought about that. So it's kind of, well, hmm. So it's, it's a real classic Spanish filler. But as I say, if you can get that into your Spanish uh, speech and use it fluently and, and constantly, then, then you're Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you again for everyone who sent in questions today. The other questions that we're going to put in separate videos, as I said, look for links to those underneath this one once they're done or on the blog at notesinspanish.com. Remember, listen to our podcast. They are full of real Spanish like this, like hombre no te pases. Um, hopefully you've signed up for our newsletter because we also include in every newsletter some real Spanish words and, and phrases uh, to, to keep you going through the week. Um, and I think that's it. Anything else, Marina? I think that's all for today. Thank you again to our Patreons who support us via Patreon and sent in these questions. Uh, we're looking forward to next month's questions. Bueno. Hasta luego. Hasta luego, Marina.